Hi, my name is Heather and this month we're going to be talking about sprouting beans, legumes, and grains. Welcome to another edition of Community Services Unlimited's Garden Gateway Virtual Nutrition Workshops. Community Services Unlimited is a nonprofit based in South Central Los Angeles and Garden Gateway is our program that offers free home gardening and healthy cooking classes. We typically do these in person at the CSU Expo Urban Mini Farm, but we are now offering them virtually. Each month we offer a different gardening topic and a different nutrition topic, and then we provide the materials from those workshops to residents so they can implement what they're learning at home. So if you're interested in learning more about Garden Gateway, check out our website, csuinc.org. Uh, and go to Garden Gateway under Programs. And if you're local, please register so you can receive information every month about the workshops that we're doing and about the free giveaway items that we are providing. Thank you so much. So here I have uh, black-eyed peas, mung beans, and red lentils. Sprouting is a really important part of preparing your uh, beans and legumes and grains for eating. Essentially, each of these is a seed. If we were to grow the plants that produce these, we would plant these. And these are what would grow into the plants that would um, grow more of these um, grains and beans. Uh, and when they're in this state, they are dry and they are dormant. And when we sprout them or germinate them, we bring to life that um, little bit of living energy that is being held in the center of all of these. And uh, in doing that, we also transform the enzymes within these um, beans and seeds and pulses and grains, uh, making it more readily available for our body to get the minerals and the nutrients from uh, these really powerhouse um, uh, grains. And so, um, it's a really simple process and it's something you can do if you plan to eat it raw or even if you plan to cook it. Um, so we'll go through how you soak them. Sprouts are also very high in calcium and in copper, in magnesium, things that are all very good for your blood. They're high in vitamin A and vitamin C, which are really good for boosting your immune system. And then in eating these, whether you cook them or eat them raw, they're very high in fiber which is useful for your digestive tract to keep things moving through. And by sprouting them, you make them easier to digest, ensuring that you can actually efficiently absorb all these nutrients and benefits from uh, these grains and legumes. And now we're gonna talk about how to wash them and prep them for sprouting. All right, the first thing I wanna do is dump them into this dish. Now, a glass casserole dish, um, or even a plastic uh, bin is good to use. You want something where you can spread things out. But I'm first gonna do this. I wanna look around and pull out any bits that don't look nice. Um, you should always be checking your beans and lentils and things if there's any pebbles or anything that might have gotten in there. Okay, and then I'm gonna run cold water and give them a nice wash. This is gonna get any dust, um, little bits off of them. Let that settle for a second. And you can see there's a slight fogginess to the water. And so I'm gonna rinse until the water is about clear so I can be sure that any dust or little bits is out of the water. Three is always my favorite number to go through and give them three washes. For the black eyed peas, I'm gonna use this small casserole dish. I could use something larger if I had uh, more. You can do three, four cups, whichever you like at a time. In this case, I'm only doing one cup. So I'm just gonna pour this into the dish. Flatten it all out. And for this initial soak, I actually do want the beans to be 100% covered. For this first soak, they're gonna absorb a lot of water and they're gonna expand relatively quickly. So here you see they're not deeply covered, 
but they are fully submerged. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the process with the mung beans. This one's a little small, but again, smoothing it out. You don't want them to be too um, thick in their layer. Using something larger if you're doing a larger quantity is important, but if you're doing it for yourself at home and you just want to do a, maybe a half a cup or a cup at a time, that's fine. So you see it's, it's about a, a single layer, it's not too thick. And again, in this case, I'm going to fill it so they're completely submerged. And the last one I'm going to do are the lentils. So I put these in here. Now the lentils, more than some of these larger beans, oftentimes have a lot more um, kind of debris and dust in the water. You can see that. So in this case, the little starch there is making some bubbles. I might actually have to rinse it four or five times to get my water. Uh, nice and clean and you want to do that because when things are sprouting you want to be sure that the water is as clean as possible so that you don't have um, stuff be behind in the water that might cause bacterial growth and all of this starch and dust also has um, you know protein and enzymes and things in it from the um, from the seeds and so you want to try to rinse away as much of that as possible so that your seeds can be germinating and sprouting in fresh water. All right, so this here is my seventh batch of water. It's still a little, but it, it's pretty much getting clear there. So I'll drain most of that away. And now in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use this dish. So it's the same thing. This first batch, I want everything to be completely submerged. All right. And now I'm just going to place these in a well-ventilated location in my kitchen and keep an eye on them for a couple days and leave them to sprout. So now that these are soaking, we just have to wait for them to germinate. And how long that's going to take really depends on the seed that you've put down. Um, what you'll start to see in the first maybe three to six hours is that these um, beans and lentils and such will do their first absorption of a lot of water. And very quickly you'll see this start to come right up out of the water. As that happens, over the course of the next two to three days, uh, when you see that your beans have absorbed um, all or most of the water, you should give them a rinse, again, so you can wash away any bits in the water that might cause bacterial growth, add a little bit of fresh water, and let them continue soaking. After this initial soak, you're not gonna completely submerge them, because once they start to hydrate and they're preparing to germinate, just like us, just like every other plant, they need water, but they also need air. And you have to create an environment that's balanced so there's enough moisture to continue to promote growth, but not too much to promote bacterial growth. That would be bad. And so, uh, again, once these do their first kind of uh, hydration and they're pretty full, after that, we'll just put enough water at the bottom so that the top layer always has access to air. And this is what they're gonna look like. Here are the mung beans. You can see that they've started to set their little tail. They've started to germinate. Now, this is a stage where you can eat them. You can eat the germinated sprouts, or you could continue to lay them out on a dish and give them a little hydration and let them get to the point where they set their first uh, uh, little sprout of green leaves. Uh, similar here with the black-eyed peas. It's a little harder to see, but you can see that some of them had started to germinate as well. Um, and so really at this point, it's just a preference on how you wish them to be. 
These are a little harder to see, but if you get very close, uh, you can start to see they are also setting their little tail. So how do you know when it's done? Like we said, it's a choice for you, but really it's just about tasting it and the texture. At this point, uh, all of these uh, have a very pleasant, a nice crunchy texture, delicious just to snack on themselves uh, or to add to salads, sandwiches, add it to soups. Um, you could also at this point cook them in any of the ways that you typically uh, like to prepare them. So um, really quickly, we're just going to show a really simple salad that you can make. Um, this is like a, a sprouted bean and chopped veggie salad, and you can do it with anything that is your preference. So uh, here at the Village Marketplace, we frequently do one with the black eyed peas. Um, the sprouted mung beans are my very favorite, and so today I'm gonna do it with that. So I'm just gonna put in two big scoops of the sprouted mung beans. And then you can really use whatever veggies you have in your kitchen. Um, today we just have a little bit of stuff, but um, so I'm doing some actual fresh, because it's spring, some fresh green peas from the garden. I'm adding in a little um, diced up zucchini. I've got some cauliflower that was on the grill, and so it's got that nice smoky flavor, and I diced that up. A little red spring onion here, uh, a little fresh diced garlic, and a little bit of jalapeno just to give it a tiny bit of heat. Also really nice in here would be um, diced carrots, um, radishes, uh, little diced celery, just anything you like, and you can think about the different textures, the crunch and the crisp of the different textures and flavors and how the different colors come together. Um, diced up bell pepper in here would be really nice. And there you go. And then just a super simple dressing. I'm going to use a little bit of avocado oil. You could use um, extra virgin olive oil or whatever other um, kind of tasty salad oil that you like. I just put in about a teaspoon. Here I'm doing a little bit of apple cider vinegar just for a simple dressing to break up. Add a little pop there. And then a little bit of Bragg's amino acid for the extra aminos, but also for that little saltiness and some black pepper. So super simple. Also nice in here could be a little bit of freshly chopped up cilantro or parsley. It's really anything you have. This is a great um, salad just to make with whatever little bits you have lying around. And, uh, and you could put in any of the beans that you like. So I use the mung, you could do it with the black eyed peas or a mix of both. And there you go. All right, so here it is. I'm gonna put a little on my plate there. Mm, it smells really good. I can get the vinegar and that little, I can smell the spice a bit. Let's see? Mmm, delicious. All those nice little crunchy bits. A little pop of the acid from the vinegar. That's great. And I love that little sweetness from the fresh peas that are coming in there. Thank you so much for joining us for this month's virtual nutrition workshop. Please check out our YouTube channel for other videos and please sign up uh, at csuinc.org to stay in touch with the Garden Gateway program. If you're trying these recipes at home, please show us how it's going. Tag us at CSU Inc. on Instagram and Facebook. We'd love to see what's happening in your kitchen. Thank you so much.